Hello everyone, welcome to the Horse Driving Games of Part 2. We're going to start out with Splatterhouse for PS3, the makeup for the green blood in the previous video. Red blood, activate! There's certainly no shortage of blood in this incredibly awesome reboot of the original Splatterhouse Trilogy. And I picked this game up along with 3D.Game Heroes, which is a great Zelda game. That, well should I say Zelda-like game, that happened to be made by From Software, the same company that went on to make the great Dark Souls games. This kind of reminds me of the very first time I played Tony Hawk and had that amazing soundtrack with bands such as Dead Milkman and of course Primus. And if any of you are wondering how I ever got into KMFDM to begin with, it was actually from watching movies such as Hellraiser 3 and of course the great book to horror movie conversion called Hideaway which happened to be written by Dean Arcoons. For me there are two horror authors. One is Dean Arcoons, the other is Stephen King. I've read all their books and I love all of their movies. And of course I do watch stuff like Anne Rice too. Don't judge me. I did like Queen of the Damned and I did like Interview of the Vampire. Again, don't judge me. <laughs> but anyways, there are some really cool stuff to this game. You can actually upgrade your skill set just like in God of War and Devil May Cry. Another thing I'm going to show you real quick is, remember I told you in a previous video for Tecmo Knight, uh, aka Wild Fang? Don't always be quick to insert your coins or start the game because many a game has an attract mode which actually shows some really incredibly cool cinemas, action sequences, and so on. This is no exception to that rule and I'm going to show you right now. And there are come, uh, some levels in this game that are actually side-scrolling levels that harken back to the original Spider-House trilogy as well as uh, different realms you travel through, kind of like Mortal Kombat traveling through different realms. There's even a cell shaded world. And speaking of the cell shaded world, there's actually an animated TMT movie that came out in roughly the year 2009. And it actually took a great, great concept and gimmick of the original TMT comics. And they combined the idea with the TMT 1980s cartoon series, the 1990s and 2000s uh, cartoon series, as well as a futuristic anime uh, idea. And they did kind of a time paradox where they took all four of them and combined them into one continual scene. It was amazing. And you can watch the trailer for it and most likely even the animated movie in its full form on YouTube. Again, it's called Turtles Forever. Definitely look it up on YouTube. You'll get a kick out of it, especially if you're a big TMNT fan like me. But here we're about to see the attract mode here. And you're going to see some of the side-scrolling levels as well as the montage of the other action levels, including the associated world. And then we're going to move on to the mini SNES and see some incredibly cool other horror-themed recommendations. And I thank all of you guys and gals for giving so much feedback and support on this series. Many of you said this has been your favorite series thus far, even more so than the Shmup Stravaganza and Race Stravaganza. So I'm going to stick with it and do many more horror-themed video game videos, of course. Again, horror movies are my favorite genre of movies, period. I've seen literally any horror movie you can possibly imagine throughout history, even as far back as me being a little kid. I'm glad I didn't have any censorship from my parents as a kid. I was able to go to the video store and rent movies with Barbara Hershey, like The Entity, and watch Halloween, Friday the 13th, and so on. I had no limitations to what I was able to watch, aside from adult movies, of course, but I was able to watch horror movies whether or not they were R-rated or not. And I'm actually very grateful for that because the parents are the ones that teach you values, not movies and TV shows and video games, despite what some critics and naysayers would have you say and believe. But we're going to move on to the mini now, and we're going to check out some more incredibly awesome games. We're going to start out with a variable classic. How about none other than Halloween on the original Atari 2600? And no, you cannot go into a normal retailer and buy this game. You have to go into a special shop, such as a gun store or an adult store, to even have hopes of buying this game. And let's see what we have going on here for the Atari 2600 version of Halloween. Hopefully they'll have the classic John Carpenter music, which really, really went a long way as far as making a movie better than it could possibly ever be. Okay, we, here we go. Can I get around him? Let's see if I can get around him. Taboo rule number one. In horror movies, the kids are normally not killed. Let's see what happens. 
Yeah, it's just running in place there. Is Michael Myers gonna take the kid out? Let's see. Oh no, he took him out. Taboo rule number one, broken. And for the record, I am a big Rob Zombie fan and I've actually seen each and every Rob Zombie movie. And I did like the Halloween uh, retell and it was kind of cool how they did a little bit of a backstory to him. And I'm also a big fan of the latest Rob Zombie movie called 31, which I consider kind of an updated retelling, in essence, of the original Running Man that starred Arnold Schwarzenegger and was based off of a Stephen King story called The Running Man, but it was also uh, under his pseudonym, Richard Bachman. Yes, he wrote several stories under Richard Bachman, such as Thinner and Running Man and so on. We're going to move on to another one here. And for the record, last year I got the privilege of seeing Rob Zombie live in concert along with a band, Korn, at the Blossom Music Center in uh, near Cleveland, Ohio. Cool concert, was fun to see. And for those of you who are Th House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects fans, he actually has an updated uh, movie coming out with three of the characters from Devil's Rejects. And ironically, when the Blu-ray format first came out, two of my favorite movies, wow! The scream in this game sounds like a test of the emergency scream broadcasting. Wow, we gotta take care of this scream here. Very detracted. <laughs> Let's take care of this. Let's turn her into a dead smurf. Yeah, she looks like a dead papa smurf now. But in any case. <laughs> and for the record, I actually just watched uh, Leatherface, which is... Uh, Kind of an origin story of Leatherface, and they few, uh, threw a few red earrings in there to kind of throw you off onto who the real Leatherface was. It was kind of cool. Trying to take a guess at who Leatherface was in the movie. You did not quite know which character he would end up being, but at the end, you definitely find out who he is. If you're a horror fan, a niche genre fan like me, you definitely want to see all of the leprechauns, all the Friday 13th, all the Nightmare on the Streets and such. And uh, it was definitely, uh, it didn't disappoint me as far as the horror movie is concerned because I love nearly all horror movies. But we're going to move on to something interesting here. We're going to move on to, I'm going to give you a perfect example of something that could be a big difference on the base of, of the soundtrack that it has to begin with. We're going to play Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis Terminator. And we're running the cartridge version right now with a standard soundtrack. Yes, Terminator. It is a horror movie in my opinion. Robots taking over the entire planet and destroying all of society and murderizing them all is certainly a horror themed movie. And I'm a big fan of all the Terminator movies to begin with. I've seen each and every one of them. And for those of you who have seen Terminator Salvation, you may or may not be aware of the fact that the end into the movie the end into the movie was spoiled, so the movie studio went on to make an alternate ending. I actually like both endings. I got a kick out of both of them. Definitely look them up if you're not aware of what both endings are. And I'm also a big fan of Terminator Genesis. I like the concept that it goes back to its roots with the original Terminator 1. Even though it didn't perform so well in the box office, there'll probably never be a Terminator Genesis 2, but there will most certainly be another Terminator movie, likely a Terminator 6. But a perfect example of a classy, class act, Sega Genesis slash Sega Genesis game. But how much better would this game be if it had more of an iconic CD-based soundtrack like the original Terminator movie? Let's find it out now. We're going to load Sega CD Terminator and see how much better it sounds with a CD soundtrack. And I have to say, out of all the Sega CD games I've ever played, Terminator Sega CD has the absolute best soundtrack out of the bunch. And throughout this horror series, I'm definitely going to go on and uh, recommend many, many more horror movies because I've seen so many of them over the years. But right now we're going to load Sega CD, Terminator, and hear the fantastic soundtrack. Here we go. Sega CD Terminator. If there's any reason to ever own a Sega CD, this is most certainly one of the top reasons for the soundtrack alone. It is impeccable, greatly produced, and it is a fine fine example of what the Sega CD could do if done right. But unfortunately, other systems at the time, such as Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, just outperformed this as far as sales simply due to games such as Mortal Kombat, NBA Jam, and even games such as John Madden Football. Yes, 
John Madden football on cartridge outperformed and outsold any of these Sega CD and Sega 32X and even Sega 32X CD games. I mean, it's just what it is. These systems, such as Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD, were far ahead of their time, and you can definitely appreciate them now on your mini thanks to Mad Monkey and USB Host. And like many TurboGrafx CD and Sega CD games, they always had to inject some sort of video footage into the games. But let's get the show on the road here and hear this incredibly awesome soundtrack. Starts out just like the other cartridge version, but it's anything but once the music gets going. And here we go. Music draws me in immediately. Really, really awesome. And it gets better and better. The only thing that can make the soundtrack better is having some guitar work in the song. Let's see what happens. And we got the wah wah guitar sound going on. I'm happy now. Great, great stuff here. Reminds me of the very first time I watched The Crow with Brandon Lee and he was on a rooftop in the rain playing that incredible, incredible electric guitar. Awesome, awesome stuff. That goes far to say that this actually holds up quite well to the legacy of the Castlevania soundtracks right now. Awesome, awesome stuff here and by far the best of the Sega CD soundtracks. This music would definitely fit within the context of a Castlevania game such as Draculax, Rondo of Blood as well. But there we go, one of the top notch reasons to ever own the Sega CD. But unfortunately for every perfect example of a Sega CD game, there were roughly 10 horrible examples of Sega CD games. And I'm not even going to show you the next game, I'm just going to browse right by it because it is that bad of a game, it should have never been made, should have never been released, it is hardly even fun to load up, to even make fun of, but it is none other than the atrocious game called Race and Aces. Uh, trust me, you do not want to go near this game, but here we're going to do another great Sega CD horror theme classic, Night Trap, and this is actually the uncensored version of the game. The original version was quickly pulled from shelves due to a shower scene that offended people and it was considered too risque for the time so yes it was re-released after it was pulled off shelves with the censored version minus the shower scene and it is, also, it is also notable that the game stars the great actress the great late actress Dana Plato who starred rose to fame within the great show Different Strokes which came out in the 1970s and early 80s I grew up on that show you know with uh Willis, Arnold, Kimberly, and Mr. Drummond. How many of you remember that awesome, awesome show? It also had the spin-off, Facts of Life. But great, great game here, far ahead of its time. Very, very ingenious, simplistic concept, but far ahead of its time, and great, great fun game. And I have to say, I absolutely suck at this game. But essentially, you have eight security cameras that you can navigate between. And you have a whole host of characters that you're going to try to save by stopping the enemies by setting off traps. Here, we're going to see some right here. If you push the button at the right time, you can set off traps to take them out. And you can also switch your security access codes. And sometimes you'll get little cues from the people in the game that could be in a room having conversations. Like, set the security code to blue, or purple, or blue and such. But really, really cool game, and there are a few people on my YouTube who actually are big fans of this game and have beaten multitude of times, but I've not even set off more than a trap or two because I absolutely suck at this game, but I'm definitely going to be playing it more. And it is also notable that they did a re-release of this last year for a 25th anniversary. See, and I failed at setting off a trap there. It turned right on the screen. If I would have pushed the button at the right moment, I would have set off a trap and taken it scoundrel out but I failed miserably I'm gonna have to practice through the game some more but this is Night Trap great great game and they also made other games like it on Sega CD such as Double Switch so if you like games like that definitely check out Night Trap and again I'm probably gonna pick up the 25th anniversary version which was released on Steam 
as well as on PS4, and I believe possibly Xbox One, but one thing they changed was the security cameras actually show a live feed of what's going on with each of them, plus their high definition video compared to the gritty gritty originals. Here we're going to move on to an NES classic, a fairly unknown game that was made by the great great company that went on to make the Resident Evil games, called Sweet Home. If there's any game that is the roots, the ground foundation of a Resident Evil game, it is none other than Sweet Home, the great action RPG game that came out on the original Fam Capcom, should I say Famicom, by Capcom, many a year ago. And I am playing the translated version of this right now. This game really, really should have been on the NES Classic, at least the Famicom Classic. It would have been great. <laughs> cool stuff here but yes a great great early RPG with overtones of the original Resident Evil I mean the ideology here certainly went on to be part of the Resident Evil theme but you can essentially switch between your various characters and have your different abilities really really cool stuff And we, we played other games where each character has their own special subset of abilities, and this is no different. What other game was it where the character said, What the? Was that a Metal Gear game? Or was it a Resident Evil with really, really bad dialogue? I can't remember. But I just wanted to do a brief introduction to this game. Again, it's called Sweet Home. If you like RPGs, you like Resident Evil, you like Capcom, definitely check it out. And anybody knows Resident Evil, the, the most common thing in Resident Evil games is having to backtrack a mile, solve puzzles, and find your one or two keyboard, uh, should I say, uh, typewriter ribbons, so that you can insert them into a typewriter and save your game every once in a while. That is why I like Zombie Revenge on a Sega Dreamcast which is essentially Resident Evil without having to backtrack and find the keyboard ribbons. It is simply straight up zombie action. Here we're going to move on to another Resident Evil game here real quick since we're on the basis of Resident Evil. How about a Resident Evil game that was never released? It is on Game Boy Advance and it's Resident Evil 2 Prototype. Yes, Capcom really didn't want to have anything to do with making more Resident Evils on here. They want to move on to other formats at this point. And then we end up getting all our great stuff like Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, and Survivor, and so on. They didn't want to stick to doing any more cartridge-based Resident Evil. Of course, until the point when uh, DS and 3DS came out. Resident Evil a bizarre incident occurred. Yes, there's actually a Resident Evil 2 tech demo on Game Boy Advance. And yes, I'm playing it on MGBA right now. Funny stuff. I would have loved to see this release for real. It would have been awesome. <laughs> Funny stuff here. But yes, this is Resident Evil 2 tech demo for Gay Boy fans. And again, I really, really hope we get Dreamcast emulation going because I'm going to certainly be playing Zombie Revenge, which is just like Resident Evil 2, but without having to solve too many puzzles and or find uh, keyboard, you know, typewriter ribbons to save your game. You simply go room to room, die hard, arcade style, just taking out zombies with your multitude of weapons. Here we're going to move on to a PC Engine game that is very, very obscure and was unreleased in the United States. Again, in my previous videos, I've mentioned that we didn't get many TurboGrafx CD or TurboGrafx 16 games in the United States because it was a failed system due to the, to the heavy, heavy Japanese theme going on here. Here we have Shai Ryu Sensen, aka War of the Dead. Great, great action RPG game, and I am playing the translated version of this. There's actually a sequel to this game on the MSX system as well. 
but I love this game. It is one of my favorite non-release games for the TurboGrafx-16. And right from the get-go, I'm going to switch my weapons because the knife is not so easy to use. I'm going to switch to my gun right, th right off the bat. And you're in an overworld very, very similar to Zelda 2 and many other games such as Wise and such. And you have the little Zelda 2 style action sequences here. And you do have an upgrade system. But I put several hours into this game and it is by far one of my favorite uniquely unreleased USA TurboGrafx-16 and or TurboGrafx CD games. Fun stuff here. But definitely check it out. Again, it's War of the Dead. I'll show you the title one more time. Because some of the Japanese games are less easy to remember. I typically, when I name my games, I name them with the original Japanese name as well as the American translation. In this case, again, the name of the game. Here we go. Wait for it. Shireyu Sensen, aka War of the Dead. Here we're going to load this great, great PlayStation 1 game that was also not released in the United States, but it's another great horror game. Kogegij no Kitaro UK Daichisen. If you like games such as Rayman that have great, great quality animated uh, look to them, I'm going to load a save state here. You're going to see for yourself this incredible game. And definitely check it out. There are a few arcade games that are very similar in gameplay to this as well. And I'm going to load one of them up next after I show you this game. But this is by far one of the cool, cool PS1 games. In one of my previous videos, I showed another game a little bit like this. The Chipoki Ralph game. But look at this awesomeness here. Great, great cartoony graphics. But yes, it has a bunch of mini bosses like this. As well as side-scrolling levels that are going to be similar to the next game that I play. But... I'm going to let you see for yourself. Definitely check it out. Very vibrant, cartoony game. Definitely, definitely check it out. Way ahead of its time for when it came out. And I really wish there were more games like this. It has kind of a little bit of an animated Flash game feel to it. You know some of them cartoony games. Like Castle Crashers. Kind of reminds me of an early Castle Crashers. But with a little bit of the Rayman style of animation school going on there. Let's see what else we have to load here. We're going to load another PlayStation 1 game. This game was unreleased. We're going to play a game called My So-Called Life with a Thrill Kill Cult. Star none other than the great, great cast of roster, such as Jared Leto, Claire Danes, and so on. Just kidding. It's really just a game called Thrill Kill, which is a great game. Trying to basically follow the coattails of the Mortal Kombat series with ultra-violence, but this game was deemed too violent. And they never released it. But technically, it was released, engine-wise, as the Wu-Tang the, uh, Wu Clan game, if you know what I'm talking about. But look right here. You have to be able to read instructions because it's not going to let you play it unless you hold down the X and Square button. And for the record, my so-called... Uh, the My uh, my life with the thrill kill code. Sorry, a little tongue twister there. They were a great other industrial metal style band. And they happened to be in the Crow soundtrack. With Henry Rollins and uh, Violent Femmes and several other great bands. The Crow soundtrack is tremendous. I love that soundtrack. But here we're playing this four player deathmatch game that was never released. And again, if you want to play the released version of this, it is essentially the engine for this game in the context of a Wu-Tang Shaolin game. Cool game nonetheless, but it is always fun to play the original one, which I am playing right now, which was not released whatsoever. But four player deathmatch, here we go. And the violence is kind of tamed by today's standards. And certainly not as violent as Splatterhouse for PS3, but it's still fun as a gimmick for one sort. Break dancing, there we go. And I'm at least gonna try to let the enemy do a fatality so you can see one of them before we move on to another game. 
It looks like the guy from Pulp Fiction is in there. The Gimp is one of the playable characters. <laughs> that was funny stuff there. Kind of a misogynist game going on here. <laughs> a little bit of an S and M theme. <laughs> funny game. But yes, definitely check it out. My so-called Life of the Thrill Kill Count, a.k.a. Just Thrill Kill. Definitely check the game out. Fun stuff there. Let's see if we have any other horror games. We're going to load the other one that was like the Gigi game for PS1. We're going to load an arcade game called... Uh, you'll see it in a moment here. It is not known as two different titles. I, don't, I have both of them in the title to make it easier for you to remember. And we should have time for a few more awesome games here. Right here, it is called Demon's World, aka Horror Story. And this is not at all an easy game, but at least you can play two player mode in it. But it's not easy at all because it's like Contra where you die in one single hit. So it definitely has a bit of a learning curve and it is a highly challenging game, but it has a great feel and vibe to it. And if you like your uh, side scrolling shoot 'em up games, you're gonna love this game. Especially if you're a Contra fan. And after this, I'm going to move on to a couple examples of Castlevania-like games before the video ends. Again, thank you all for supporting this series. And I'll be doing a part 3, a part 4, and hopefully get up to a part X. You know, kind of a little play on Jason X. Many, many years ago, I actually saw Jason X. I had it in my collection when I was using a BitTor and such. And before, before BitTorrent, it was actually IRC, Internet Relay Chat. But I had Jason X sitting in my library, and I didn't even know it was a Friday the 13th movie. It surprised me at the time. But yes, it starts out like a, like a cutesy side scroll and shoot 'em up game, but it is anything but. You get hit once, you're done. But get a, a two-player in here and have some fun. Let's see what happens when I get hit by one enemy. Done. Just like that. Tough, tough game. But here we're going to move on to this fantastic Castlevania game that is not truly a Castlevania game. But in my opinion, it very much essentially is a Castlevania game. We're going to be playing this great, great computer called the PC-98, which is also made by NEC, the came, same company that made the TurboGrafx-16 and the TurboGrafx CD, as well as the PCFX. And here we go, the PC-98. We're getting there. Game called Rusty. And for all intents and purposes, I'm going to keep referring to this as a Castlevania game because I think there might have been some kind of argument, some kind of license and disagreement because everything about this game speaks volumes as far as a Castlevania game is concerned. There's so much a Castlevania game, it is ridiculous. And computers such as the PC-98 and the X68000 were arcade quality systems at the time. In fact, the X68000 was used by Capcom to make many arcade games such as... Uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, and even Street Fighter 2. They literally made the games on the hardware and released them in the arcade. Yes, X68000 was an arcade development system for all intents and purposes aside. But right now we're going to play this great game that is very much a Castlevania game without the Castlevania title to it. Without the titular Castlevania characters. And I'm definitely going to be having to pick up Bloodstained as well as the the prequel predecessor that was promised as a, a, a pre-release to the game due to the people donating enough money. But we're going to check this out here. And I'm going to certainly be showca showcasing the, the Bloodstained prequel, should I say. I'm just going to call it the prequel for now. I'm going to be showcasing it in part 3 for sure. But here it starts out with a similar vibe of a Castlevania game.
this game was just translated into English within the last year or so, ironically enough. And unfortunately, even though the PC-98 is an excellent, excellent computer, this is going to be the main game that people talk about for the system. Definitely check this out, as well as many of the other great, great PC-98 games. There's just a ton of really fun ones to play. And I've done a PC-98 test video before showing some of these in action. Great, great game. Definitely check it out. And we're going to move on to one more game. The close-up shop here. Another Castlevania game that was re-released. Should I say released in the arcade without having a Castlevania title attached to it. But it is 110% a Castlevania game. Whether or not it is considered canon, I consider it 110% a Castlevania game. It is also one of the most difficult arcade games I have ever had the pleasure and privilege of playing. It is none other than Haunted Castle from 1988 and it is made by Konami. It is very much a Castlevania game in essence here. Just check it out for yourself. If you're ever going to use the Cheats H mod for Main 2003, this is most certainly one of the games you may want to use it for. If you watch my uh, Cheats video, you'll see me do a playtest with this game using the Cheats H mod. But here we're playing a great Castlevania game that never truly was a Castlevania game. But it really is a Castlevania game. They should have just called it Castlevania Haunted Castle, but they didn't at the time. And of course, after this game came out, Simon's Quest came out for the original Nintendo. If there's any reason to call the Nintendo counselors, it was most certainly games like this, the original Simon's Quest. How many of you would have known to kneel and hold the red jewel in your possession to get the tornado to come and pick you up? Ridiculous stuff there. <laughs> Castlevania without having Castlevania in the title. Awesome, awesome stuff here. Check it out, and thanks for checking out my Horse Driver Games of Series. Hope you enjoyed the video.